Hey folks, Fernando doing our video for the Modern Survivalist and here I have a video request. This is from Andy Crisp. He says, loving the new book and your videos are as great as always. Thanks man, he's talking about my latest book, Street Survival Skills. Already seven five-star reviews. Guys, if you haven't left your review, those are really appreciated. And there's already a function of look inside. If you wanna go check it out in the look inside, uh, function of Amazon you can flip through like half the book and see what's what's like and if you're interested or, or not and at least take a look so thanks for that uh, what else can I make a couple recommendations for future videos absolutely you most definitely can that's kind of the idea number one an update EDC bag video I love your EDC vids but haven't seen what your bag setup is for a while okay we're gonna be getting into that in a second I'll go through the pocket EDC stuff that I usually go through a little more in terms of basic philosophy on that and then this video is gonna be a tad longer and we'll go through some of the bag stuff that you're asking about some of the content in there and what that is all about number two a quick video covering the apps you use on your phone for news weather and general General preparedness etc sure well the last part is kind of quick because in my phone I really don't have a whole lot it's a this is an LG G6 running Android I don't even know what version of Android it is and I use the stuff that I in here like Google Maps that sort of things so as to find my, my my way around if I'm in a new place I'm not so familiar with which may be the case if I'm uh, using anything in terms of internet I have a Firefox install which I like better than other navigators what else if this phone is um, FM radio capable by using the, the the headphones which uses it as an antenna but all of that was included in the phone uh, that's a nice feature because if there's no internet if there's no nothing you can just use your headphones and use this phone as a traditional FM radio without any anything else no internet no no phone signal no nothing uh, finally maybe the only thing that's kind of more unusual is um, it made the, the um, a Coinbase a app for Bitcoin. That's something that I'm, I've been using for quite some time just to, try to check out the price and such. Uh, I have a traditional uh, weather app, like I suppose everyone else. The thing that I often use the most, to be honest, in terms of weather is my watch. And this is the reason why I like this part of my EDC so much. And this is a, a Casio Pro Trick that I've had with me for several years now. It's solar, so I never got hooked up on all these um, uh, smart watches, all that crap. I, I just... I just cannot convince myself of charging my watch every couple of days or every week when I'm already used to something like solar and I don't have to charge it for you know ever it's been like this for years without any me without me doing anything and whenever I'm wondering about the weather and I found it to be far more reliable to looking into anything that my my phone has is looking at the barometric pressure chart there for example my app in my phone was telling me today that it was gonna be a stormy uh, day thunderstorms clouds my phone was telling me the opposite my phone was telling my phone my watch was telling me that the barometric pressure was going up steadily for the last few hours and that means we're gonna be having nice weather and indeed that was the case so I trust over the years I've learned to trust my watch rather than my phone that's one of the things I mean in, in terms of sticking to a setup that works for you that's why you always see basically the same stuff the, the watch is the same because the watch has been has been very good for me I don't know if I got that right there yeah so you see a little ch chart there for years I've already understood how to understand this and if for example if, I, if I'm seeing it drop like you know fast there I know it's gonna be starting raining hell in just a, a few moments so that's a, a big warning for me uh, when it's going up weather's gonna be just fine or when it's kind of stable like it is now after going up a little bit that's kind of the the idea okay so let's do this uh, number one would be the part about the EDC stuff it's basically the same setup as always and this is the stuff that I recommend basically for anyone else because this is what what's been working for me so I will have like any other normal human being my phone which will already cover a little bit it's an LG G6 with an a Spigen a armor case which is very light, compact, because I like uh, slipping it in my pocket. Uh, I used to have a bigger notes, and I kind of 
got bored of the idea of having something so big. This is all screen and it's been for a while. So, you know, this is something that I'm already used to. Um, all screen, I have the button there in the back. I have nice cameras for taking pictures and it has a tempered glass a screen protector. And then of course my, my wallet. The wallet in which I keep, try to keep a, a decent amount of cash and a few coins just in case. And then I will have, of course, my watch. And it's usually going to be this one, the Casio Pro Trek. It's made out of titanium, it's solar, it has a compass, it has a barometric pressure chart, which I just described, the moon graphic, the moon uh, the little display so as to know if you're going to be having full moon or not. And it even has something that, because I live by the sea, and it has this, uh, where is that thing? It has the, the chart so as to tell you when, there it goes, the, the tide graphic showing you how the tides are going to be looking, which at some times it's, it's kind of useful if, uh, if we're in the beach and that sort of thing, it can be uh, handy as well. So that's it in, in terms of watch. Now this past weekend, keeping this completely honest, is this is a watch I've been using these last few days. My Orange Monster, Seiko Orange Monster. And it's, a, it's a definitely a, a mechanical watch. There's been a little bit of confusion for some people in terms of what is mechanical, what's not. Some people confuse the analog display, thinking that because you have those hands moving, it's a mechanical watch. There's a ton of solar powered uh, watches which are digital but have an uh, analog display. This is not the case. This is a true watch in terms of it has uh, all gears and little springs and things on the inside. There's nothing electronic going on here. It's not a quartz watch. A quartz watch will need a, a battery. This needs no battery whatsoever. That's why for some people they think of it in terms of EMP. It is true. If there's an EMP, this watch will suffer nothing at all because it's all mechanic. There's nothing digital or electronic or anything like that going on here. Um, on, on the other side, it's not as accurate, of course, as my digital watch, and yeah, I, th I think both of these are very uh, rugged. This one is much lighter, even though it's a little bit bigger, because it is titanium. This is steel, very rugged, but heavy. But for the weekend out with, with, with the wife, with the kids, it looks nicer. It's a nice, uh, colorful watch, and it has this awesome lumen thing that's very very bright let me see if I can get that to work with a with a flashlight so you see how, how bright that material is it looks quite nice and it's a pretty fancy uh, watch and it's rugged and reliable as well it's a, it's a real diverse watch that's the thing so those two those um, three things then of course um, a folding knife usually what I'll have with me is the ZT 0630 which is the knife that is most often with me this weekend though i went with an oldie but goodie the cold steel voyager which is a light knife very strong as well maybe one of the sturdiest types of lock it has that tanto tip yes i like tanto uh, tip blades i think they do have a purpose they're very strong they penetrate nicely and they leave a pretty uh, open up wounds if it's ever used for self-defense and this one in particular has that combo edge which gives you that serration and straight edge some people are not so much of a fan of that i kind of like it for a practical um, for a practical use blade because it gives you that option of chewing through some harder materials if you ever have to and you still have the straight uh, part of the blade for typical cutting it's a knife that's been with me for for many years and i'm not using it a whole lot but whenever i need it it was always there and got the job done so i i i know it's um it's a good way to go this time it went with me for this weekend in terms of multi-tool the one that's been with me all this time the lerman charge tti which is the one that i would not do without by any means because it has a fantastic blade that if i need a knife if i don't have the knife i have the blade here this is usually most most of the time it's good enough for whatever a pocket knife task you need 
Yes, it's S30V, which is a good steel. I've been resharpening in it quite a bit. It holds an edge for a longer period of time than uh, more, more common steels. It's just a fantastic multi-tool. In my opinion, the, mes the best uh, multi-tool money buys these days. And the uh, Lurman Wave is a little bit more affordable or maybe quite a bit more affordable. It's pretty much, pretty much the same thing. I'll leave the link for my uh, Amazon store, which I just uh, set it up uh, just a few days ago, for mo uh, where you'll find most of this stuff. It will organize there, just following the link below if you want to check it out. Guys, these are things that, as, as you guys know, just check the older videos. It's been with me even before I started on YouTube. Again, changes here and there, upgrades whenever it was um, you know, sound to do so, but always kind of the same setup. Having uh, um, a pocket knife, having a multi-tool, having a flashlight, having a, a lighter. And for many years now, it's been this one. Sometimes I go with something else. This is my uh, Zippo with a gas insert made by Thunderbird, which I'll leave the link as well there. If you follow it to the store you'll find it there in the um, I'll make you know what a specific EDC um, menu for all this stuff so it's easier to find so the, the gas uh, insert has been fantastic it was always a little bit of a concern if it would be losing the gas no and of course I greatly recommend this one you can also also go with different things you know it's something more more classic like an Imco lighter this is a pretty old lighter or if you just want something simple that just works you can go with these the clipper lighters some people like the big lighters those are also great the um, the clipper lighters are, are nice because you have a uh, variety of different colors. The, the orange one is quite nice. There's a yellow one, translucent, so as to know how much fuel you have inside. These are refillable, unlike the big lighter, so you can refill these ones. And you have metal ones too, which are a little bit smaller, but a, a, a little bit more classy, I guess. I like this one, the gunmetal color. Again, refillable, and you can change the flint as well, just removing this that I've been told in the comment section that stoners like these because they use these for for their cigarettes and yeah no, definitely not, not my thing but uh, I understand that's something that people like I like the fact that it's just refillable that that's what does it for me what else in terms of um, flashlights just any good flashlight that you know it's it's quality as you see I have a lot of titanium in my EDC and the reason for that is that unlike aluminum which kind of gets dinged up and scratch all over in in a, in a quite short period of time to be honest because I've had in my EDC different um, aluminum uh, flashlights black ones or whatever color it is it always starts scratching up titanium is not like that titanium just holds on much nicer this is a class uh, M17T. It's just a very flash, a very bright flashlight which has uh, a bunch of different modes. You even have the, the moonlight mode, which I find it quite useful and I like having that in my flashlight. And a little a pro tip, if you want to call it that way, I guess, is the way I go about my EDC flashlight these days is going with a flashlight that is rated so as to handle lithium ion batteries of the 14500 variety, such as this one. 14500 is pretty much the same form factor as AA batteries found everywhere, right? So this flashlight can handle a standard AA battery or 14500 lithium ion uh, batteries that are just more powerful. This one in particular has a micro USB port, so you can actually recharge the battery itself so as to always keep it uh, charged, uh, topped up, and ready to go with full charge. And of course, you have that versatility of if you ever need it, you can just use a standard AA. That gives me a lot of flexibility in my tiny little EDC flashlight. And of course, I have a little whistle attached to it because the, the whistle is one of the best ways of signaling when you're hurt, when you're injured, and you can barely um, keep it together. The whistle allows you to make your location notice in terms of a, a disaster or an accident or something like that. Uh, what else do I have here? I have my, my keys. I'm trying to not make this video too long, but the same setup as always. My house keys will have my Victorinox Mini Champ. They will have uh, the uh, spare flashlight, which is this uh, through night T, also titanium with a rechargeable AAA battery, uh, USB drive, uh, peanut, uh, titanium peanut lighter, and a small uh, pry bar for prying stuff without breaking something more important, such as the tip of one of my knives or the tiny uh, blade in the 
Victorinox. My car's uh, key setup is pretty much the one thing that has changed uh, most recently, which I have yet another flashlight. Don't ask me why I have so many flashlights. The thing is, I always end up using pretty much all of them. So I cannot convince myself of letting go of one because even this one, I was just using it last night because of whatever reason. The cool thing about this one, besides also being titanium, is that you can recharge it as well. And this is the Claros uh, Mini 1T, right? It's kind of finicky the way it's the, the twisty thing is not super consistent but it does work and I have a, a Victorinox a manager which has a ton of the functions that you have in the mini champ but just more compact this is a great setup for me which I appreciate a great deal so now let's move on to what I have in terms of bags and EDC bags so the reason why I haven't been doing much EDC bags videos lately is because I haven't been using them mostly to be honest it's been pretty much pocket EDC stuff for me because I'm currently in a situation where I'm mostly moving around with my car so it's the stuff that I'm keeping in my pockets and anything else I have my my vehicle already pretty well organized so most of the stuff that I would be otherwise needing so as to be carried in an EDC bag is already in my car but when I when I end up using one for whatever reason it's usually going to be either one of these it's either this old bag that i've had with me for many years already this is the old mk is 7 1942 gas mask bag this is the same bag as the one used in the movie indiana jones except that they change the um, this this uh, strap with a rifle sling made of leather i just kept the original strap because i'm more than happy with it and the bag is just fantastic it's super compact and you usually can fit pretty much the stuff that you need like a, a water bottle a few other things here and there and and that's it and it kind of looks like a little purse my wife makes fun of me I'm okay with that she's been married with me for quite some time already so I can live with that but usually it's gonna be either this bag or maybe more often this other one this North Face red bag and the reason for that is it's bigger I have more room it's sturdier that one is a little bit more fragile and I'm kind of sentimentally attached to it already so this is the one that I use whenever I need anything that's a little bit more needs to be a little bit more rugged but let's see what I have inside forgotten here in this one and that's an indication of the stuff that I usually will have in my EDC bag of course a uh, small first aid kit and I have a bunch of these in different bags floating around so if I'm ever you know putting something together for a trip or, or something I just grab whatever it is I need put it in a bag ready to go but usually I will have a first aid kit in my EDC bag as I said a, a water bottle of course what else do I have here some a uh, Kleenex absolutely uh, lighter as you saw you have already my EDC lighters but a spare one is not a bad idea especially this one wrapped with orange duct tape makes for a nice little uh, solution in this bag I don't remember having much of anything but let's check out nonetheless now it's pretty clean on the inside so yeah it seems like I cleaned it properly when I when I had this last time the one thing I do have in my bags and it was recently on the table because this is something I carried in my uh, in my pocket uh, for for this week and we were going to the movies watching the last uh, it movie the Stephen King one and I took with me a, a little bit of hand sanitizer because the kids are eating popcorn and before eating something with your dirty hands a little bit of alcohol makes a, a hand sanitizer makes a lot of sense so for that moment it was part of my pocket EDC and my a 511 a pants which have all those big pockets that allow you to put a, a bunch of crap in there that sometimes you don't need but every once in a while it's nice to have that extra space the one thing I will usually have especially if I'm going anything that it's gonna be more outdoors type of oriented it's especially you know especially hiking that sort of thing I will have a fixed blade and um, yes that is definitely something that I will always have with me whenever I'm um, doing anything that's you know hiking any little day hike doesn't matter just having a, a fixed blade just makes perfect sense for me usually it's gonna be this one this is the bussy what is it boss Jack the name is it I'm not so sure it's a little bit big, it's a little bit heavy. For some people, for me, it's 
kind of like the smallest blade I will go for. Yes, I know that kind of pisses people off, but I, I'm just... Uh, at this point, I'm, I'm not so much of a fan of small, tiny knives. I guess that folks that are a little bit more bushcrafty, they end up favoring that sort of thing, something very tiny. But whenever I need something, something tiny, I have my, my folding knife. I don't need a, a tiny fixed blade. If I have a fixed blade, I want a, a decent one. Uh, same here. This is a Psycho Dog Soldier, I think it is. Uh, Dog Soldier 6, probably. Um, the last, I, the one I took to my last hike was a Glock knife. No, 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 no. It was this one, yeah. The the Glock knife is fantastic because it's very light, so it's definitely gonna be making its way to my bag more often lately um, uh, for in the future. But the one I took in my last hike, to be completely honest, is this one, which is the Dog Soldier Eight which is a very decent knife. It's not, I mean guys, it's not very not very heavy. I, I get it that some guys like very tiny, bushcrafty, feeling like a freaking elf kind of knife. I, I don't fall for that. I like, I like something that does that uh, pry bar, digging, scrapping, beating the crap out of stuff, fighting and chopping wood and doing anything that I need. Yes, and if I need something smaller, more detailed, I can just choke on the blade. Yes, I don't need it. I, I would have rather done without even this choke uh, choil thing. No, I can just grab the blade from here and just use it if I need something you know, for that kind of detail. I can just grab the blade itself. No big deal. But this is a pretty neat setup. This is probably my best survival knife, so to speak. So yes, it's usually when I'm using it uh, when I need one in my in my bag, and then I will have usually my a notebook. I'll grab one of the ones I have floating around, which is kind of disorganized at the moment. But yes, yeah, so as to take notes, especially if I'm doing a a, a trip going somewhere, I'd like to have a, a notebook with me. And these are just some of my other bags. If I have to go with something a little bit nicer looking, dressier, more classy, you cannot get a lot more classy than with a saddlebag leather briefcase, which I've, I, again, I've had it with me for several years now. It's a little bit kind of heavy because it's all leather, quality leather. Um, you know, they're pricey, no doubt, but they are maybe one of the finest leather bags, leather briefcases ever made. And you have good storage in there and it's not going to be breaking apart on you anytime soon. Looks good, carries gear for you, and you just feel good carrying it around. I know it kind of, it's the heavy part kind of sucks a little bit, especially if you're jumping from you know, one place to another, airports, that sort of thing, or carrying on your back and walking a lot. If you're jumping from, your, from a plane to a car, that sort of thing, not so much. But I do a lot of walking, and if you're walking a lot, that kind of gets, um, it gets heavy. A, a lighter bag makes more sense if you're walking but for trips uh, where you're using vehicles that sort of thing definitely a very classy neat and awesome way to go is a saddlebag leather bag then I got another messenger bag this is also from a gas mask bag I got it for just a few bucks on eBay I think it was like five six bucks and it would be like my spare uh, gas mask bag from the R1 so I think I use it a couple times, not much more than that. It's okay, it's pretty much the same thing and it has those compartments for the, the gas mask that allows you to put a, a small water bottle or a medium or large water bottle in there and have a little bit more room and organize it nicely as well. Uh, some other you know, small backpacks, this is a little backpack for, for a trail or whenever you need to go super lightweight. Can't do a, lo a lot more lightweight than this, very compact. This is my old high school bag. So this one is over 20 years old. And yeah, it's it's still you know, doing its thing. It's still working. I've replaced the zipper once from the pocket, but that's it. It's still a very a handy backpack, no complaints whatsoever. And this is maybe the last bag that I got and I used it in my one of the last hikes I did with, with my kids. And it's a Miltech bag. Again, I'll leave the link for all this stuff. Yes, including that one and this one below in the, in the Amazon store in that uh, EDC, um, in that EDC uh, storefront. Um, button thing there. Uh, what I have in here is just organizing it in terms of having a, a, ba um, a first aid a pocket with some tape, some, uh, some quick cloth 
and your basic uh, first aid little kit there. Then I have this just as I I short last time after using it, I, I took some of this stuff out, but basically still in there, most of it. A flashlight whenever going out for a hike, even if it's a day hike, that's something that I've learned years ago. Uh, a day hike, if something goes wrong or you get lost, or it can easily turn into a night thing. So having a, a, at least a couple good flashlights, that's something you want to go with, no doubt. There's a Through Night TN12. Great flashlights by, by Through Night. Some. A paracord and hand sanitizer for when having lunch. Some Kevlar cord in there. And that's it for this pocket. I'm trying not to make this video super long because these videos just get crazy. And here finally I have one of the bottles. I had a couple bottles. This would be a, a larger steel one. Still has water in there. So yeah, this is something you definitely would be taking in an, a, not only a hiking bag for me, an EDC bag. You need to have a bottle of water because you're going to be drinking it. And it's kind of an important part. Some uh, hand uh, wipes for cleaning your hands, face. I have even the aluminum foil wrap from the sandwich and cookies we took to the trip. That was a good day. And whatever it is that I have in here, not, not so much more. I mean, I like going light. I have a survival kit in here, which has a bunch of other stuff, you know, a, a larger survival kit with a, a respirator and you know, a small survival tin kit in there. Uh, rain ponchos, tarps, that sort of thing. You know, the, the kind of thing you would do, you would end up using if something goes wrong in that trip and you have to stay there overnight or, you know, just a, a survival kit, which makes a lot of sense. And some binoculars, these are Tasco, which are okay. And I took them specifically for this trip. Guys, that's all. I mean, that's it. I'm not carrying much of a bag lately, but that's kind of the content I usually go for. Maybe I'll do another uh, dedicated EDC bag content with with some of the stuff I, I will usually have, but it's somewhat around these um, these parameters, not a lot more. You know, I will have a, a hat with me, a, a Glock hat, my sunglasses, which at the moment are in my in my car. And that's it, guys. Take care. Have an awesome day. See you on our next video.